Well, good morning, good morning, everyone. This is the day the Lord has made, and of course, we are rejoicing and glad in it. Praise God. Welcome to another great day of ministry, ministry in the Word of God. Praise God, where Jesus always brings you fresh, new revelation on a daily basis. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been on a project, something that you know without a shadow of a doubt that God placed upon your heart? But it seemed like doubt comes, doubt persists, and it looks like if you continue on this same road, man, your life going to be destroyed, your reputation going to be, be destroyed. I mean, you know, uh, you know, why don't you just go and give up on this because it doesn't look like that business is going to ever get off the ground. You've been talking about that business for so long, and it's then it got off the ground. You've been talking about this is my dream, or you've been talking about this particular ministry that God put in your heart and you know this is what this is what your future looks like but it looks like it's just not happening you know doubt just keeps coming in wavering comes in <laughs> praise God still hoping that it will but afraid that it won't well we're going to talk about that a little bit today about about what to do when doubt comes because doubt will come any major project that that God uh, uh, assigns you to embark on you better know that doubt will come, doubt will try to persist. But the good thing is that the Bible said Jesus Christ is the author and the finisher of our faith, praise God. And the Bible said if God started it, that he's going he's gonna to complete it in your life. And so I want to just talk to you a few things about this because we have a story here today about Peter who uh, was very in inquisitive. He was very adventurous. <laughs> You follow me? He was the kind of person, you know, I mean, you know, that, that if it's out there, I want to go for it in Jesus' name. And so we're going to look at the time when Jesus, you know, uh, uh, came walking on the water. These disciples were out there. It was a storm going on, major storm goes on. But Jesus, in the midst of this storm, comes walking on the water. Can you imagine how the disciples felt? I mean, all of a sudden they see this ghostly looking person, <laughs> you follow me, in the midst of this storm, walking on the water. And the Bible said they became afraid. And just like anybody would, I mean, if you and I, I've been on cruises before, and, you know, and, and if you've been if you, like I am, that water, when you're way out there in the middle of nowhere, can be very, very, uh, in the natural realm, fearful. And especially if there's a storm that's coming. Are you following? Because I remember one time we was on this one cruise, and, I mean, that storm was coming, and it was amazing how, how, how that thing just kept on happening, happening, happening. And the devil wants you and I to get into that point in our lives where we begin to look at the storm and so look at the storm ceaser. <laughs> Amen. And this is what happened to Peter in that day. And so, uh, but we're going to look at this for a moment because uh, God, God wants you and I not to get into doubt when, it, when the storm comes. Are uh, you following? And to still see Jesus walking on that water. So here we are, Jesus, walking on the water. And let's, let's start in the book of Matthew for a moment, chapter number 14 and verse number 25. It says this, and in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And in verse 26, and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit, and cried out for fear. Well, that's a normal human response. I mean, we may, we may criticize them, you know, you know what they're doing, what, you know, doubting like that, but put yourself in their position. You, it's a storm out there. you out there on the sea, and it's dark. <laughs> <laughs> you follow me? And all of a sudden, you see somebody walking in the sea. I mean, let, let's not try to too, too spiritualize this thing. Because in the natural, all of us, if you see that happening out there in the middle of the sea out there, we, we would see this kind of thing where the devil would try to really put fear in our lives. And so let's look at this for a moment, because this is what the devil tried to do to us in our daily lives, whether it be in your marriage, whether it be raising your children. <laughs> You follow me? Whether it be, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, strife on the work, you know, pressure on the work and things like that. Doubt can come when it's like the storm hits. Are uh, you follow me? But let's notice what happened here. And let's look in verse number 29. It says, and, G and uh, well, let's look in verse number 27. Let's look at verse 27 first. It said, but straightway Jesus spoke unto them, saying, be of good cheer, it is I be not afraid. Uh, and, and so I, I want to just stop right there for a moment. Because in the midst of your storm, you can expect Jesus to confirm that it's him out there with you on this water. Because one of the most fearful things that, that I would see in them is to be out there in that water and not have no assurance, <laughs> you follow me, that God is with you in this storm. 
So Jesus immediately comforts them that, you know, that in the middle of the storm, when, when, when it does not appear where you know who I am in your storm, I'm going to comfort you in your storm and let you know it is I. I'm, it may not look like it, but it is I. So I want you to know today, man, what storm you're in right now, Jesus wants to comfort you today and says, be of good cheer. Don't get into fear right now in the midst of this storm. Don't get into fear because it looks like things are not working out in the time schedule you thought it should work. <laughs> you follow me? Uh, maybe the people you thought would be with you, you know, are not still with you like they said they were going to be. But don't get discouraged because I am still with you in this storm. If I said we're going to the other side, we are going to the other side. Are you following me? So let's, let's look again in verse number 28 now, what it says. It says, then Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come out there on the water. Now, so we can see Jesus, number one, coming on the storm. He comforting us, but Peter needs a little bit more assurance. <laughs> Are you following me? And, and, and what he asked of the Lord is powerful. I mean, it's really powerful. He said, well, number one, if this is you, out there where you are, where there, it is impossible for someone humanly to walk on the water. You out there, I'm here on this boat. I'm in a place of safety. But I'm, but I'm willing to leave my place of comfort. I'm willing to leave my place of assurance on this boat and go out there where you're at. All I want to know is, is it you out there? And if it's you out there in the middle of my storm, I want to get up out of this boat where I'm comfortable with my five senses and I want to get out there where you are and walk on the water just like you. And you know what? You would think, Jesus would rebuke Peter. Peter, who do you think you are? Do you know that you were just a human man? Don't you know that, you're, that, you're, that, that you've been designed just to be in the boat for the rest of your life? That this, that this, this water walking life is not for you? And, and you should just stay in the boat where it's comfortable? But Peter, again, <laughs> you follow me? I love Peter. He's, Lord, I want to, if it's you, I, I want to do what you do. The works that you do, I want to do them also. And so look at, what, look at what Jesus tells him. Let's go in verse number 29 now. Uh, and, 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 and he said, oh, my God, look what Jesus told him. Come, <laughs> come, Peter. Amen. And when Peter was come out of the ship, listen to this, y'all, he walked on the water. Are you ready to leave your ship? Are you ready, you know, to add his word only? with no other evidence but the fact that Jesus said, come. Are you ready to step out of your boat? Are you ready to be adventurous? Are you ready to take the risk of what you had not been sure who it was, but you heard his voice? I think that's so important in the midst of your storm that you hear God's voice saying, come out here where I'm at. All right, you've been used to, you know, uh, uh, being on a job all your life. I'm asking you now to come out here into the realm of business. I'm asking you to come out into the realm of supernatural ministry, supernatural business. Are you ready to leave the boat and come out where I'm at? Are you ready to alleviate the doubt that's in your heart and come out here where I'm at? And, and Jesus said, come. Jesus said, come. <laughs> oh, my God. Can I say that to you right now on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ? Come out here. Come out here, you that have always been just, you know, you know satisfied and, you know, and, and singing in the choir. But God wants to make a psalmist out of you. You that's always liked to, you like writing. But God now is calling you to write books. You, 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 you that have you know, serve your pastor for a long time and faithfully, but God's now calling you to go start your own church. 
you, you that have been, you know, a, a, a supervisor, a manager in a business, but now God is calling you to start your own business. Are you ready to come <laughs> out there are you, where, where the brave goes? Are you following me? Are you ready to come? And I like what Peter said. The Bible says, he said, come. Mm. I'm declaring of your life right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You guys, I, I like these. You can see some of the th people that are giving. Thank God for those that are giving as I'm talking. But, but, but God is telling you right now that no matter where you have been, no matter where you are right now, come. I'm calling you to the next level. Moses, you've been out there uh, on the backside of the desert for the last 40 years, but it's time for you to come now and walk with me. I'm sending you to Pharaoh. I know you are a stutterer. I know you have no, I know you have no, uh, no experience in ministry or speaking, but I'm calling you to come and, 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 and go deliver my people. And you're gonna, you're gonna go through the Red Sea on dry ground. Come in the name of Jesus. Gideon, I know that your, your family is poor. There's no one that in your family that has ever done what I'm asking to do. But Gideon, I'm calling you a mighty man of God. And you're going to go forth and you're going to deliver my people. Come on, Gideon. Come. David, you know, you're just a shepherd boy. But I'm, I'm, ready, I'm getting ready to make a king out of you, David. Are you ready to come out from just being a regular shepherd to being a king? Are you ready to be, you know, instead of just, uh, you know, guarding the sheep, are you ready to conquer Goliath for, for my sake with a slingshot and five stones? Come on out here, David, where you can say that Goliath come with you with a sword and spear, but I'm coming with you in the name of the Lord. I'm coming out there. I'm stepping out of my boat today. <laughs> are you ready for that today? That's what God is calling you for. He's saying, come on out here. And so Peter is the same thing. Peter said, okay, hey, Lord, I've never walked on the water. I've never seen anybody walk on the water before. But at your word, at your word, I'm coming out of this boat. I'm going to do uh, uh, what, what looks impossible. The dream that you put in my heart as of today, I'm stepping out on this thing. And notice what happens. It says that it says and when, when he had come, out of the water to go to Jesus, uh, he walked on the water. Mm. Can I tell you of a fact, you're not going to fail. You're going to walk on the water. Moses, you're going to go to Pharaoh, and I'm going to cause Pharaoh's heart to harden so that you can see my, the demonstration of my power to those that will leave where they're at and come and follow me. And, the, and but now this is what I want you to see because this is what will happen whenever the end, whenever you, you step out of your boat, you need to know this, that doubt will come. The storm will come to try to make you feel that that business God told you to go into is never going to work to make you think that ministry God's called you to is never going to grow. And so what happens is let's go to verse number 30. What it says there, it said, but when he saw the wind boisterous. He was afraid and beginning to sink, cried, saying, Lord, save me. That's what will happen sometimes when you step out of your boat. Are you following me? If you're not careful, you will start looking at the winds. Now, the winds were already there. So it was not the winds that caused Peter to sink. It was him focusing on the winds. It was him taking his mind, his eyes off of Jesus and the word God had given him to come, which was enough to walk on the water. But instead of him keeping his eyes on come and focus on Jesus, the Bible said he began to look at the storm that were boisterous. And that's what gets many churches to stop. That's, that causes your businesses to stop because all of a sudden you were expecting to be like, you know, like, 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 like a bed of roses, but it's not. Those, those that achieve greatness, are uh, you following me? They, 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 they learn how to persist and persevere during the storm. That's when the best of them comes out. That's when their trust is really tried, but when it's tried, they come forth as pure gold because they understand that the winds are part of the process. Satan will try to distract you with winds, 
maybe your husband or your wife decide to leave you because they feel that they, they can't handle that, that, that spiritual journey that you're on. Maybe some of the members in your church or people that was in your Bible study that said they're going to be with you if you start a church, they left. The storms are boisterous right now. Maybe the business that you were in, the first business, you, the idea you had, all of a sudden it, it didn't work for you. So you feel like the winds are boisterous. Maybe it's not, it's not my time now. But so there's winds that will come. There's storms that will come. Are you following me? But God would never have told you to leave the boat and walk on the water if that word that he gave you was not powerful enough and potent enough to bring you to the completion of that thing. Bible said he which had begun a good work in you will finish it. So I'm telling you, God started this work in your life, and God is telling me to tell you today, you stay focused. Amen. You stay in your lane, and you, and you continue to move forward in spite of what's going on because Jesus is the one that told you to come out there he told you to start that business. He told you to start that ministry, that church. He, 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 are you following those areas? So you have to stand, as the Bible said, having done all to stand, stand therefore. <laughs> Glory to God. Because you, you, you arm yourself right now for the battle. God did not give you those, the, 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 the shield of faith if he did not meant for all the fiery darts of the devil to be quenched. Because there are going to be some darts of the devil. going to be so, But he gave you the shield of the faith. He said, with the shield of faith, and you use your faith as a shield, you can quench those fiery darts of the devil. Because there's someone going to be fiery at the devil shooting at your life to try to get you to step outside or get focused on the winds and the storms. He said, but when the storms come, he said, your faith will, will work as a shield and you continue to confess, I am who God says I am. I have what God says I have. I can do what God says I can do. Whether I'm present experience or not, I, I got a word from God. And God told me to start this business. I got a word from God, and God told me to start this ministry. I got a word from God, and God told me to, to move from here to there. You, you got to stick on that word that God told you in the midst of that storm in those areas. And then I like what Peter did. When Peter saw that he had got off focus, I'm going to say it again. When Peter saw he got off focus, he had enough strength to do this. Look what happened uh, 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 in verse number 30. But when Peter saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried, saying, Lord, save me. Oh, my God. He had enough strength to say, Lord, I made a mistake. I got off focus. Are you following me? I got to focusing on what my wife wasn't doing, or what my husband was not doing, or what the, the members of my church wasn't doing. I got to focus on the business. It ain't growing like I thought it was. I got to focus. The Lord saved me because I'm be I see myself beginning to sink. He did not sink. It said he saw himself beginning to sink. That means when the, it, it's, like a, it's like letting air of a tire. The more you focus on the situation, it's like air coming out of tire. You start sinking. Your face starts diminishing. Because you're beginning to sink. And God's calling me today to say to you, I, I'm here on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ to rescue you. Amen. And help you get back on your dream. Help you get back on walking in the water. You understand faith. You've walked in faith before. You have saw the miracles of God. But sometimes something got you off track. The winds got boisterous. <laughs> Amen. And you begin to focus on those winds and those storms and your answer begin to be logical instead of spiritual. I believe me. I know, I know I'm talking about it. I've been there before. I got the I got the ring and everything too. the, the watch and everything that you can begin to your answer can begin to be based on what CNN is saying or, or what other people are saying. And you never want to do that. You want to you never want to get lower your conversation down to the logical uh, 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 facts that people are saying. This is why you need to do that. You got to stay in faith. That if God said it, he'll do it. If God spoke it, he will bring it to pass. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by how I feel. I'm going to move by what I believe because it's time for me to deal with the doubt. <laughs> Are you, I'm going to say it again. It's time for you and for me to deal with the doubt. So look at this here. I like what Jesus told him in verse number 31. It said, and immediately, oh my God, and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. <laughs> oh my God. And caught him and said, 
oh, you of little faith, wherefore did you doubt? What caused you to doubt? In other words, what was it about the storm that got your, 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 self, your, your, your thought pattern, your mind off of me and on the storm? What, what caused you to doubt? You know, you saw when I said come, you walk on the water. You experience the supernatural power of God. And some of you out there right now, I'm talking to you. God's talking to you through me right now that you've experienced God's power. And Jesus is saying to you, where did you doubt? Oh, Lord, I married a husband. I married a wife, and that caused me to doubt. You know, they, they were not with me. Oh, Lord, the, the people that I thought would be with me, you know, they, they, they didn't support me like I thought they was. He said, what caused you to start doubting? The money didn't come like I thought it was. What caused you to start doubting? Because when, you, when, when you're in faith, you don't necessarily have to believe God for the money. You just have to believe God that it's God's will for you to do it. And where God guides, he provides. And what God ordains, he sustains. So the main thing you want to do is make sure, all right, God, this is your will. And then, God, is, your, this, is this your timing for me to do this? Because that's what it's all about. Because he said, I will supply all your needs. So, that, so we got to begin to ask ourselves, because what caused me to doubt and get myself back on making logical decisions? Are you following me? When God has called me to walk on the water. Nothing wrong, with being, nothing wrong with being a good business person. We shouldn't be a good business person. We should be a person that operates a good business uh, acumen and everything like that. But when you're walking on the water, you can't be moving what you see because out there, there is no budget. <laughs> out there, there is no budget. I, was, I think we, on business, on Monday, you got to do a business day, but out there on the water, there is no budget. It's whatever you need. It's already done. If you need money for your taxes, he said, go and look at the fish's mouth and you'll find uh, a money, a piece of money in the fish's mouth. It, you know, if you got 5,000 people and all you got two fish and five loaves of bread, that the, fish, the, 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 the meal will be multiplied because you're out there on the water. The supernatural, when you're moving in faith and not in doubt, the supernatural is guaranteed to manifest in your life. Glory to God. Are uh, you following that today? Look, so let's look at this. Let's look at it for a moment. Look what he says there in First John 5, 14, what he says. He said, this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And then in verse 15, and if we know that he hears us, then we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. So all we got to do is, all right, Lord, is, is this your will? Is this your timing? And, and, and if it is, and you told me to walk on the water, and I've experienced walking on the water as I obeyed you, but now just I, I got to focus on the storms, but it's still what, I've got, what I was doing is still the will of God, what I was doing before the storm, what I was doing before it sunk. It's still there because dreams have no expiration date. I just need, I, I'm calling you, Lord. I'm getting back into your will where I'm confident back, the peace of God back in my life, where the, my desire is back strong again, God. And now I'm ready, God. The Bible said they, they went, both of them, Jesus pulled them back out of the water and they walked on the water. That means he did it again. That what you did before the storm, he'll do it again in your life. You can walk back on the water again. And you don't have to, you ain't got to change what God said. Are you following me? If God spoke it, that dream has an expiration date in Jesus' name. So as we see this then, so God's moving you into this place where he's building a strong desire in your heart because some of you have lost your passion. Some of you lost your desire because of what happened. It, it takes the steam out of you. But, but I want to I, I get you back in the faith again today. Mark eleven twenty three 23 says, For verily I say unto you, Whosoever now shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. And in verse 24, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. So the devil is trying to get you out of, he's trying to get believing out of your heart. He's trying to get you uh, believing that it's, it, it, that it's not already done. But so that's why it's time now to deal with the doubt. He said, if you should not doubt in your heart that that same supernatural power that you've experienced in your life. And many of you talking right now, you know, you know the power of God. You've seen the power of God in your life. You may have gotten away from it for some reason or another. Doubt may have come in and storms may have hit. 
But he said, I can get you back where you're believing in your heart, not with your head. Because you can believe in your heart and doubt in your head and still see things happen. Because you can cast down that imagination. You can bring that thought into captivity. And what's in your heart will still prevail over that situation in your life. You follow me? So look what he says here in Luke chapter number uh, uh, 12 and verse 29. He said, he said, and seek ye not what you will eat or drink or neither be of a doubtful mind. See, in other words, he said, don't keep seeking after the thing. You seek after me and don't get into a doubtful mind. Cast down that imagination. Bring that thought into captivity. Because as a man thinks his heart, so it's you. So you got to deal with those things in your mind so that your, what's in your heart can continue to flow. Amen. It's time to deal with uh, doubt in Jesus' name. So notice he says in James chapter, chapter number 1 and verse number 6, he says, But when you ask, hallelujah, you must believe. This is a new international version. When you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown by the wind, blown and tossed by the wind. Verse 7, that person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. And that's why I said that God said, tell them today, deal with the doubt. It is not your wife or your husband slowing you down, not your kids, not the person that left you. It is the doubt. It is the storm that has caused you to doubt, to be wavering back and forth. Are you following me? Did God say it? Yes, he did say it. You know why I know he said it? Because at one time you operated on this word and you saw it work. At one time you moved in this power in, in, on that word and you saw miracles. Are you following me? So God is still God. That word is still potent. That word God gave you is still potent. It's still active. It's still alive. You, all you got to do is like, you know, call on Jesus. Lord, I missed it here. Amen. He picked you back up again. And you start walking the water again with him. It's just that simple. Amen. And God is, is sending me out today to help rescue you. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. You said, Dr. Craig, I only know rescue. But that's, this is not for you. But there's someone out there right now that God is sending me directly to you today to say, uh, uh, Pastor Craig, go rescue that individual. That person has a divine call on their lives, whether it be in business, whether it be in ministry, or whatever it is. And God is saying that doubt came in. Storms came in and caused you to, to, to doubt and to sink and, and, and you not know what to do. But this is the spirit of God speaking to you today that, that the angels have, 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 have pulled us together today for a reason. And God is saying, deal with the doubt and your dream will still come to pass because if God spoke it, he'll bring he'll do it. Amen. If he if he started it, he will finish it. And your dream has no expiration date on it. Jesus picked up Peter immediately, and they begin to walk on the water again. And I'm declaring today is your day to get back up again and walk on the water because you still have a powerful future in front of you, and the future is still bright, and the future is still great in the name of Jesus. Well, praise God. I'm going to be with you all this week. I'm looking forward to being with you this entire week this week, talking to you about your future, what God has for your life. And the whole point is what God spoke to you in the past about your future is still alive today. <laughs> Amen. Enter into your today because today is your day to walk back on the water, to take up where you left off of the devil till you'll never get back there again. But today you begin your whole, your, your dream at the level that God gave it to you. And not only that, because it's going to get even greater. It's going to be even greater. And, and other people are going to follow you and walk out there with you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. And Jesus allowed Peter, even though, he, even though Peter had you know, sunk and got out of track, he still let Peter preach the first sermon. Got 3,000 folks saved the first day. So don't tell me how God can restore you if you've sunk one time. <laughs> Amen. Jesus was still using because you were, you were not afraid to go out there. And Peter walked on the water. So much so that the Bible said his, the, the, his shadow passed by people and they got healed. He was still walking on that water. Went to a man at the gate called Beautiful. Never, never walked before. He said, Peter said, in the name of Jesus, the water walker. Get up and walk in Jesus' name. And the man got up and walked 
I'm telling you today, saints of God, your future is still bright because Jesus is still on your boat. And not only is he on your boat, he's out on the water with you in Jesus' name. So, Father, I thank you for this word. I thank you for whoever this is that, that you have assigned me to talk to today. And, God, I send, I decree a rescue ship for anyone, God, that has been sinking. And, Lord, if you stretch up your hand today as you did with Peter and you pull them up out of, that, out of that sinking place in their life, I thank you for full, complete restoration. And that no matter what if they sinned or whatever going in their life, God, is forgiven in Jesus' name. I decree them fully restored, spiritually, physically, and financially for your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Okay, now, we're going to come back with you tomorrow. Now, this, now daylight saving time changed here in Las Vegas, where we're at right now. But in Arizona, you all stay the same. So that's why, so that I can have plenty of time to, to prepare messages, you know, because I prepare these every morning. You know, uh, our time went a little back, a little back, so that's why instead of being with you at 8 o'clock, because I normally is at 9 o'clock now, because that would still give me the same amount of time to prepare for you, because I don't like just coming in out to you any kind of way, okay? So it's, I'm changing from 8 o'clock in the morning to 9 o'clock in the morning, Arizona time, Mountain Standard Time, okay? So we're looking forward to be with you again, Arizona time, 9 o'clock, Pacific Standard Time, Till 8 o'clock. But until then, this has been a possible. Oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. For you that want to give, because many of you, y'all sow seed on Monday, all right? So I need to get that to you. For you that are my partners, I want to not forget about, you know, giving an opportunity to sow your seed. If you're on Facebook or you're on YouTube, uh, however you listen to this, you know, I practice sowing the seed. Uh, people that give and tithe and offering are water walkers. You know, we, 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 the, you're not doing just to pay bills. But you, you, you water, you're a water walker, and you understand that your seed is not just a debt that you owe, but a seed that you sow. Your tithe is not just a debt. It's a seed. Because you, you, we're water walkers. You believe in God that when you pay your tithe, you give your tithe, you're, not just, you're just not just paying a debt. You believe that this tithe is, is causing an open heaven for you. It's creating new opportunities for you. He said, when you tithe, I'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. So you understand that the tithe is not just something debt, some legalistic debt that you owe, but it's literally a, a, a heaven opener. <laughs> Glory to God. And it is the devourer rebuker in Jesus' name. So, so as you give your tithe today, understand that point. And then as you sow your seed, the same thing. So then also for you that, you, so you can do it, number one, through the link that's on Facebook or YouTube, I'll be watching this today, uh, or through Zale at I Am Ministries, or through Cash App at Dallas Town Apostle I Am, or you can actually use that QR code right there. You put your phone up to there, you know, on the QR code, and it'll, go, it'll take you right to our giving area. But I'm trusting God for all of you that are our partners. I praise God for you because it's because of you, even during COVID, it's because of you and I parted together to get the gospel out that God is meeting every need in Jesus' mighty name. So I'm looking forward to be with you again tomorrow at the same time. Until then, this has been Apostle Alfred Craig saying, may God's riches and his very best be yours. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye now.